I read recently that you found some 3D printers and that's how you got your spacecraft. So you have to explain that one. Well, that Saturn V, we actually printed in the art department. Uh, it's actually 40 foot high, so. I mean, I, I've been trying to, it's, it's been a long time in using modern technology with old techniques, and I've been building miniatures uh, for a while, and this is the first time Damien, you know, just said, you guys, you build them. Um, and so we started on day one, and I've been taught, I, I, we have tons of printers. And, um, we have a print farm, and, and so we just started day one in the art department, we started printing that Sun 5, um, because the studio just don't want to build miniatures, and so we thought we'd do it ourselves. Um, <laughs> and that's, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can build miniatures, someone has to shoot them, and someone has to get model movers, or someone has to light them, so it's an argument we decided that we would uh, have later in the shoot when we built everything. And it was like, here they all are. <laughs> we can get every shot in camera, in, apart from the engines of the Saturn V, which is real NASA footage, everything is in camera in there, uh, either with miniatures, I mean, it's all. So, and that, that's really important to me, because that's how we, well, I make films, and that's how Damien wanted to make this. Uh, it's more interesting, I want to, I, I mean, it's fun, it's like, you get to make everything, <laughs> you know. So, so, <laughs> so it, the whole, the whole, the rocket and the capsule that yeah, they were like in. Yeah, like the edges spinning pink. was a little miniature we knocked up next door in the post shoot. The Gemini is a full size exterior with its, and we just put special effects, put compressed air, put in front of LED screen. The opening shot with him looking at the rock and re rocket reflection is NASA footage on an LED screen shooting into the window. And like, it's a shitty set that we're just doing this to. So, <laughs> you know, and it's like... Don't uh, tell all uh, the tricks. <laughs> yeah, but these aren't new tricks. These are 100 years old. It's like you just have to, like... I, it's always been more fun since I started in film. I kind of want to make things, so... <laughs> and then how do you then take the 3D printed capsule and fit controls and seats and well, harnesses and... Nathan actually built spacecraft, uh, that, the like whole real ones uh -huh. that, that the actors sat in. But he th had to 3D print a lot of the little knobs and dials that you see in Gemini and, and Apollo. Yeah, they don't have those at Hayes, Hayes Hardware anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or Lowe's. No. <laughs> well, Damien wanted, and I agree with him, he wanted every switch to work. So it's a bit of a learning curve for special effects. It's like, no, no, that thing has to spin. We're in X, X15, we've got to climb out of the atmosphere. And the whole thing, the whole shot is on a spinning dial. And those knobs have to work, and those thrusters. And, you know, we, we, you ha he has to feel that. Um, you, you can put the pen in, and that's about it, so. <laughs> right, and there's the fixture department again, right, Jay? <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, you know, again, this, we're, we've, we've touched on it, but we know that your passion is for doing it in camera wherever you can, and that's sort of the tradition you've been able to work out with other filmmakers, and it, it really makes it so honest and real by doing so, and then using the tools, as, the, as you say, the spinning pen or anything else, but um, how do you, Ultimately, how do you manage to keep so much in camera, especially when you get into the Kennedy Center things? Well, I think, you know, it's methodology. You have to right. decide. I mean, well, I've learned this over the years working with Chris Nolan that we, right. we, we've learned how to do this and it's taken all of those experiences to learn how to do this. Um, and so you have to, you can't do it without a strong director. So Damien is a very strong director and he will, you, you can't do it alone. You have to no. do it with a DP, you have to do it with special effects, visual effects, and, and you know, and it's important. So I can present a methodology and often I'm guessing, because we all guess, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking, I think I know how to do this, but uh, just stick with me. Uh, and, and then I, you know, <laughs> frankly, but shit. And uh, it's like, have I been off too much? It's like, no problem, we're built, you know. And, you know, we played lots of games, like this year would come for a presentation and we'd have the big print, all 18 printers running and making noises. You really had a print Donna fire. Langley would go, what's that? And I said, that's the miniature department. You know, and, um, you know, so there's lots of games and 
you know, it, it, it's, it's method, it's process, and if you don't start right, you're not going to end right. Yeah. So you have to stand your ground, much as the other designers were talking about. You have to stand your ground yeah. and say, I know how to do it. Luckily, I've got older, and people now believe me. <laughs> when I said, we can do it like this. Well, I, I promise you, it's going to be fine. And you got a good accent, too. Yeah. That works. Yeah, yeah. yeah we go down to the cave. It's like, I need to get a real crawler out of the shed, out of the VAB <laughs> building, because otherwise that miniature is going to look shit when they comp it in. So you, you know, it's like we've got to, you know, the trick is like you start with, you have to start with like full size, then you can cut in some other bits like quick yeah. look up at the sand five, then you've got to get back to the actor and then you've got to get onto, you know, the launch pads. You have to get into full size reality and into mix it. So you have to decide how, you have to become a little bit, you have to figure out and edit. Um, and you know, so you have to be like this with the director. Right. Um, and then of course we had, all the neighborhoods, which were. That's, uh, yeah, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. There's a great progression of when Neil Armstrong's first family home is in, Ken it's Kentucky, right? Or some, I don't know, it was a small. They're in a, uh, their cabin up in Northern California. No. Yeah. No. It, Where were they? But no, it was, it's Edwards, near <laughs> Edwards. Definitely a lower income before there. he right. graduated. And then we go to the tract homes and so how, how did you talk a little bit about how you arrived at, at that? Well, the, in Houston, there's actual, you know, there's pictures and research of, of everything because they were going to the moon and no one had been to the moon. So it's in life, it's in look, it's in time. So you have that. And then, you, of course, you can't find the stuff that's in the pictures. So you have to... <laughs> say, well, I'm, it's not high-end 1960s and 50s, it's, it's Sears, it's J.C. Penney's, it's the local um, department store where they, all the astronauts' wives shopped for everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a really great research to base what I was doing off of. Your discipline, though, and palate control was just impeccable. I mean, they really was, it was stunning to see those tableaus. <laughs> no, that's not true. I mean, Kathy, early on we, like we knew we had to get the romanticism of these neighborhoods where these astronauts, right. El Largo, where they lived, and we knew we had to make it like, we had to make it seem like, oh, it's just another day at the office, you know, and it's not, it's incredibly dangerous. So the home life had to be sort of, you know, safe, but yet become more dangerous. So, right. you know, we would use, it's high contrast, it's just light contrast. And so Lena's, so we use a lot of dark walls and like, like the light kitchen, the opening to the dark wall, so we could really feature, you know, this sort of isolation of Claire in a kitchen and the kids being left and him going off and his deterioration. Uh, and so, you know, Kathy found, I mean, I, I, we were busy, so it was like we had to say, okay, Kathy, I can't get to these houses. It's like, you gotta go for it, because, <laughs> I, I'm like, you got too much to do. You were you know. making miniatures in the garage. <laughs> well, we had so, you were printing it was like we had so many missions <laughs> we had to cover, and it was like, I don't know. I've got to go. I haven't even got to Apollo yet. And, you know, <laughs> and then there's the moon. 15 and Gemini. And, like, and by the way, mission control is like, Jesus. So it was like, Kathy, we had to split. It was like, it was so Kathy, I thought, did those interiors perfectly. Because there was a simplicity to it, and it, yeah. and, uh, you know, uh, which was really important because the, the other stuff was so complex that, that you needed this, this simplicity. But then the consoles at Mission Control, how, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> there, there are certain things that when Those you... Those are on eBay, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> certain things when you read the script, a script of anything that you just cringe, you know, a police station and an alley and no, you I'm, hate all that, but Mission Control like that. would make me twitch. No, well, you didn't see it, but it looked just like, really like Mission Control. And the consoles came from a, a company in Kansas. We had them shipped. But then we had to augment them, and that was a nail biter, because I just didn't know that we were, the crew was technically able to do what needed to be done, and, and that actually you had to read what was going on on the screens in time, and, th and that was my nail biter. What I find is that sometimes some of the, um, it's a curse and a help to find 
uh, places that we need to recreate that are well photographed and well documented. Everybody's seen photos of Houston well, Space Station, but, but not Gemini. <laughs> so Gemini was first uh, off the, uh, their new building, and so everyone sees the Apollo. So it was there was lots of consultants who would say, "Oh, I think there's an 18 on that column over there," and it's like, "Great, <laughs> we get right on that." Uh, there's a phone call in the corner. Um, Just the opposite problem from the favorite, where there's actually a lot of photo documentation and memory. <laughs> <laughs> but so that, um, you know, we cheated. I would lowered the ceiling of mission control because you, you got to fill the space. And we put red in the back room. I, I wasn't sure I could get away with it. So Kathy got me a hot red floor in the back. So no matter what light they put in there, it was going to be red. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, you know, so the things that you have to as a designer, you have to like play with the space so it becomes yours. So, um, but I mean, the desks were were painful, and then you sort of get into that, and they're not really they're not actually like computers. The computers underground, and they're sending pneumatic tubes to those desks, and then they're photographing the information. That, so it's just a video projection of a sheet of paper coming from downstairs. So, you know, <laughs> it was just like um, Damien wanted to do it all live to the mission, so he wanted to photograph every screen, every button, everything. And so he's very obsessive, um, but <laughs> makes him good. I, well, that leads into my question for you about what were the challenges <laughs> that conf front of, confronted you and have obviously given both of you the most pride uh, in accomplishing those tasks. And I'm going to preface that, though, by just, just acknowledging for everyone uh, Miniatures started in the art department. We used to always do, I mean, we, the, our uh, forebears used to make everything, and they were in charge of all of that. And then we, over time, it just got, especially as the studios dissolved, those, those departments disappeared, and outside sources provided them. But you're kind of back at that whole reinventing how we, they used to make films and taking control of it. And I think that's fantastic. So Yeah, I mean, I, I just love it. I love those. But we also, you know, you can, you can like, it's a study model for an idea. Mm -hmm. You can just, you, they, like, I have nine printers running right now, so with an idea for the next film. <laughs> that, and you leave them for two days over the weekend, you know, and they're, you know we're going to get 20% failure, but I can put together a model, discuss it, and then throw it away and start again. Um, and that's what, like, the freedom of, of that, apart from the miniatures, is an extension. Oh, and it's really, I, I wanted to do the miniatures on First Man just to get more budget into my department. Mm -hmm. And so I'd get more art directors and then get more help. So, and everyone How'd that go? Went well because visual effects used to charge a fortune for them. So it was like, <laughs> it's like we're much cheaper. Yeah. So, <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> well, it goes back to the challenge for both of you. What, 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 what do you leave this film with with the most pride in terms of uh, what you were able to accomplish? So besides surviving? I think it was the, the neighborhood. Um, you didn't see this in the movie, but Nathan built their house. It burned down in real life, and we burned it. But at the end of the movie. So it was the house from the cabin. They moved to the house. Mm -hmm. Then it burned down. Then it became. We called it Armstrong Two. So it was Armstrong One, Armstrong Two, house burned down. So we had one weekend to take Armstrong One and turn it into Armstrong Two. Oh my God. And then at the very end, the house burned down. Was this an accident or was it scripted? It, it's, it happened in real life. Oh. No, it's scripted. They cut it out of the film. Right. Yeah, but it was, it was, yeah. There were some really interesting scenes that didn't make it. As always. Well, it's a it's big always. story to put into two hours. But I just, I just felt that the whole experience, as hard as it was, because that's what it is, it's, it's a very difficult project. But after you sit back and you look at it, you go, I did that. And you're really proud of, the, of what you did and how it looked. And working with Nathan, too, was just. It looked amazing. Really good.